Welcome, please be seated. We're glad that you're here. When you came in, we handed you a watermark news, and the reason we do that is so that you might know that the Lord our God is still mightily at work, and we also believe that we're largely a literate crowd. So I'm not gonna read to you a bunch of stuff that's in there. We believe you can, but there's something in there that goes with every life stage and every ministry need that you might have, including if you're not yet aware of who God is and that you might want to be able to ask questions about him. There's something in there for you. But please, take a look inside your Watermark News. What I do want to pull your attention to is the story today. And one of the things you'll see at the very beginning of that story is a woman that shares with you that she believed for a long time that the best way for her to stay mentally healthy was to keep things inside. And in fact, she learned that that turned into toxicity and pain. If you have been around the issue of sexual abuse, childhood sexual abuse, in any way, I would encourage you to read that story. In fact, you know that our Lord our God loves all people, not just victims, but also perpetrators. And so if you're here and you go, well, you didn't mean tell me God loves people who are uh, actively hurting children? I'm gonna tell you he does. We can tell you if they don't have their sin dealt with radically on the cross by a savior, it's not gonna go well for them at all in eternity and even for now. But I'm telling you, he loves them. And if he loves them, he might even love you if you're here this morning wondering if there's a place for you. So read that story. Be encouraged about where healing comes from and that you might know more of the character of our God. That's the kind of stuff that's happening here. And because it's happening here, a lot of folks are responding to what's happening here, and that's really exciting. And so one of the things I want to let you know is we believe that, that because God's name is being uh, lifted up here, that there is... Um, an opportunity for us to keep serving others. So maybe you remember months ago, we asked for this body to pray about how we might invest the resources that God's given us to be stewards of to opening another campus. Well, we've done that. It's up in Plano. And uh, literally millions of dollars went into making that, that site available. We think we saved eight figures plus by moving from the one site we had to another. We know we did. We know we did. And so God spared us tens of millions of dollars literally to get a spite a site ready to go, and that site is ready, and it's been meeting for six weeks already, and then tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna all meet up there at 5.30. We have a time of prayer and worship, a time that we remember what God has done through communion. It's called Raise the Mark. Tonight we're having that on the Plano campus, so if you've invested with us in that campus, we're gonna encourage you at 5.30 tonight just to drive 15 miles up the road and meet with the folks that are up there as we just hit our knees and ask that God would continue to work in us and through us to make disciples. We're not trying to gather more people in places. We're trying to equip the saints, reach lost people, and make disciples to turn them loose for all the things you're going to hear us talk about this morning. But tonight at 530 is a chance for you to see that facility and more importantly, to be reminded of what God intends for us. So I'm going to ask you, if you don't normally make Raise the Marks, to think about that, but especially tonight, to come and pray with us on that campus. It's gonna be a great time up there. Now, here's what else is amazing about what's happening up there. We've been meeting about six weeks in Plano. That's why I always say good morning, Fort Worth, good morning, Plano, as we minister in the Metroplex. Well, about three weeks ago, during the time we allow folks to greet each other, some person uh, stood next to somebody else and said, man, it's so great that you're here. How'd you hear about this place? Were you a part of the Dallas campus? And that person goes, what are you, what are you talking about, the Dallas campus? They'd never even heard of Watermark Dallas, but they were already being reached and encouraged by Watermark Plano. Now that's great news. The problem is, is part of the reason we started this is we knew we had over a thousand plus folks that lived you know, north of a certain area that we thought would start to make that place their home. Many of them did. Not enough of you did, all right? So we're kind of where we were before we started this. So it's a couple of thousand people gathering up in Plano today, but you know, there's um, well over 10,000 that'll gather here which is awesome, but we have a space problem still. And uh, we, we, we are excited that God's allowing us to serve more people, but uh, what we're gonna ask you guys to do is to participate with us in something. So here's what I'd love for you to do. If you have an iPhone, take your iPhone out. If you already had your iPhone out because you haven't been listening to me, now it looks like you've been a part of the service, so <laughs> way to go. So for the sake of those who haven't been listening, pull out your iPhone or your Samsung device, and what I want you to do is go to watermark.org forward slash survey. Watermark.org. You don't need to put www. That's so early 2000. Okay. Just watermark.org forward slash survey. And what you're going to see there is, is a, a survey. I'm going to walk you through 
what our heart is and what we'd love for you to do in helping us figure out how we can reach and serve more folks and steward the resources that we already have. So we have an amazing facility here in Dallas. So we're asking the Dallas campus to ask us, to answer a question with us. If we were going to um, ask you what your primary service that you attend is, that's the first thing. So you guys will put 1115. That's the service that I'm sure you primarily attend. If, if, if you just happen to be here and you're normally a 530 evening service person because you knew we were gonna be in Plano tonight, so you, you're here, put 530. But for most of you, it'll be 1115. That's the service you currently attend. What we're asking you is if we started another service, either at 7.30 in the morning or, or thereabouts, or one at one in the afternoon, or if we introduced the full suite of children's services in our evening service, we're gonna move that to five o'clock instead of 5.30, and what we're gonna do is, is make sure all the children's ministry and, and youth stuff that's available in the morning would be available in the evening, would you go there? Or if we started a Saturday night service at five o'clock with a full suite of children's and student ministries opportunities, would that be your primary service that you would attend so that you can make more room for other folks to be able to be here on Sunday morning? So you, um, you ask yourself this question, where would I go? If I could go to any service I wanted and it didn't affect anybody but me, I would choose to go to 9, 11, 15, 7, 30 in the morning, one in the afternoon, five o'clock on Sunday night or five o'clock on Saturday night. And then we would love to know, where would you choose to serve? Because here's the thing, if we started a Saturday night service, everybody goes, I'd love to go there, but no one's gonna serve, then it's not gonna be the same experience. We're not gonna have folks to greet you, park you, serve your kids. Where are you going to serve? What service would you be a part of this family um, in helping others feel welcomed on this campus, okay? Now, as you answer that, and by the way, some of you guys that might get a little clogged, we've done all we can to open the bandwidth on this, but uh, just hang in there, and, and, uh, and, and it'll either go through or you can take it a little bit later. If you don't have a, 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 you know, a, a device that allows you to do that, you can take the perforated section of the Watermark News, which is where you let us know that you are welcome, uh, uh, that, you're, that you're here and that we can serve you in any way. And you can just write down on there, I attend the 1115 service, I would choose to go to the five o'clock on Sunday night and I would serve at the 7.30 on Sunday morning, which would probably be the craziest combination, but go for it, I say. Okay, so uh, let us know on that Watermark News and we'll also add that to the survey responses. All right, now, one last thing that we're gonna ask you guys to do. While we're moving towards whichever one of those we're going to go to, it's gonna take some time to be able to implement it to get everybody online, you know, uh, to do that. We do have about 2,000 seats available on Sunday night. And we're gonna work hard to get Sunday night currently to offer everything Sunday morning offers. And so we're gonna ask, until we start this other service, we need a couple thousand folks who are gonna just say, you know what, I'm gonna make that for the time being my primary place of gathering with other believers. And so I want you to pray about that and consider that. And, uh, and then some of you have to help us backfill some of those student ministries. Right now, our, our, our children's ministry on Sunday night is combining a bunch of those children's classes into one large one. We're gonna, we're gonna change that. It's gonna be just like Sunday morning, okay? And so we need some of you to go, I'm gonna serve there, but I'm gonna start to attend there to create other opportunities for folks that maybe aren't as mature as me who still think I'm gonna do what's easy for me because it's all about me to be here on Sunday morning. Now, not everybody who's here on Sunday morning thinks that way, but we're saying if there's any way you can, we're asking you to help us in the next couple of months until we start this next service by attending that 5.30 service that's already there. We're gonna hopefully move it back to five and hopefully add the full suite of children's services immediately. So some of you are gonna do that as a stopgap until we start the service that would be ideal for you. Okay, I hope that's helpful. That's gonna really be uh, helpful to us as we figure out what to do. Obviously, starting a Saturday night service is a huge commitment from the staff. But if that's what we're gonna do to serve this city, we're gonna do it because our goal is to not have more folks come and gather, but more folks come to know the Lord and then be discipled and then be served in every way that God intends. So take a few moments. If you haven't got through in the survey yet, do that now. We're gonna have a song. And then we're gonna have an opportunity for uh, you to be greatly encouraged by my, my buddy JP, who's such a gift to all of us as we open up God's word together. So uh, fill out that survey and then uh, prepare your hearts to hear from the word of God.